Today we're gonna go over a radically different way to automate things. With a new system I like to call Breakpoint Processing. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we made some absolutely incredible progress by completely revamping our entire steel production chain, adding in hundreds of constructors and foundries. So now hopefully we are set for the rest of the game. And also, the more factory mod got updated, again, and added in these new twin constructors, and now we are producing all the stuff we need to make all the new factory stuff. And we're bringing everything all the way up and over to here, right above our main storage room. And speaking of updates, SAS Factory itself got a performance update. So maybe that will do us a little bit better, maybe not, who knows? We'll see. Today though, we're just gonna be focusing on our base and updating it. Because now that we have all this steel, it's time to do something with it. Main thing being though, is getting our encased industrial beams back online. Because they stopped and we burned through these things really, really, really quick. And also, it's really important for us to get more rotors and motors back online. But since we've automated that stuff already a couple times in this game, today's focus is more so gonna be on our base layout. Because generally speaking, this entire area is all gonna be our base. And we have to figure out how we're gonna design and structure it. And oh guys, the design of this base is gonna be drastically different from the last Let's Play. Because we're taking the overflow method to the absolute extreme. Like, it's like that child toy, where you have to put the right shaped blocks into the right hole. Except in our scenario, we're just getting one giant slab of steel and crushing the literal shape box itself. And we're gonna call this new system Breakpoint Processing. Because we're essentially taking the overflow method to its breaking point. Yes, I know, very clever. But you know, you can leave a like for the attempt, right? But that only covers the design portion of things. Now for the layout. And mainly it should be kinda simple. And we're gonna have a large storage area going out this way. This whole, ooh, everything is gonna be essentially a giant warehouse. And then over this way, or as items move further in this direction, they're gonna get further and further processed. So we'll have storage, constructors, assemblers, and then manufacturers near the end. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. First up though, we gotta build some more floors. And oh buddy, do we have some more floors now. Oh, this warehousing area is going to be the most insane area in our base. For sure. Like, take a good look at this area specifically. Because later on, it's going to be just the greatest mess in the world. Uh, anyway though, so we have our warehousing floors. This one is going to be just for getting stuff into the right position. Because the next floor is where all the spice is gonna be happening and everything's actually storing. So this floor, hundreds if not thousands of large storage containers will be everywhere. And then like I said, downstairs, just the belts, getting everything organized. So yeah, almost every item in the world will be passing through this area. It's going to be a nightmare. But in the beginning at least, everything's nice and clean and spicy. But it'll look even more spicy once we actually have items moving through it. So we just have to activate our steel factory which I asked you guys to name last time, and in the comments you left me a lot of great suggestions. But I think we're gonna go with the Steelix, because not only is it a Pokemon name, but it also sounds really cool. And speaking of names, if you have name suggestions for our warehousing area, uh, let me know as well. Anyway, uh, let's get this thing activated. So what I was doing for the longest time here was I was actually siphoning off steel from all of these other lines, and having it come up to the more factory area. <gasps> oh! <laughs> We're okay. We're okay. That was on purpose. <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, all of this stuff was going up there just so it would overflow and actually make a bunch of stuff. But now, it's time to cut that out. Goodbye. 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 Because now everything is moving and grooving over into the constructors here. Ooh, and guys. Guys, guys, guys. I have even more good news here. I made a mistake! We actually don't need to power shard all these constructors! This is the total amount we need! So we don't need to worry about any of that nonsense. However, some mistakes are better than others, and I forgot to belt all this stuff up. Oof. Alrighty though, 
with this, we now are going to be making 3,600 steel pipes per minute. Yeah. It's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty good. But even better than this, I've been waiting so long to see the actual foundry area up and running. Oh, it's going to look so good. I can't wait. So, not here. Here we go. Here we go. Do I have the more factory thing? I do. Let's just fly for a second and look at all the beautiful belts. Moving and grooving. Why are they not moving and grooving? Is there something that's happening here? No, that's like that. Huh. I guess just the backlog is getting like emptied out right now. But soon, all of these are gonna be moving and it's gonna look amazing. It already looks so cool. It's like when you see one of those like trippy photos online that if you stare at, like it looks different. It's kind of like that. But okay, we'll come back to this once it's like fully moving and grooving. Uh, right now though, I think I've made yet another mistake here. I don't, yeah, no. We're not making any of the doodly doodly doos. Steel beams. Wait, well, hold up. Why are there steel beams coming over this way? Where are they coming from? Hello? What's this, is it you? Have you done this? Oh, I've already set some. This doesn't make sense though, why? I'm not sure. Uh, regardless though, we kind of have to deactivate like half of this floor here because we only need half the amount of constructors to make the steel beams. Because the pipes take 15 per minute and the steel takes 30 per minute. So if we just deactivate half the floor here, just by doing something like this, there we go, and then changing all these recipes, then this whole floor works out. So I wasted a little bit of time on this whole side, but psh, under the bridge now. Now we're all good. But 10 times 24, 240 steel beams per minute? Okay. That's a pretty hefty number of steel as well too. And if need be, we can always convert another floor over to steel beams as well. Though I think we're gonna need steel pipes a lot, 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 lot more because we're gonna be using them in our late game modular frame factory, our rotor factory, in heavy modular frames. Oh my gosh, encased beams, like, yeah. There's so much to do with them. And so that wraps up the easy part of everything today. Now we actually have to start using the pipes and constructing stuff. Like I said earlier though, mainly it's gonna be the industrial beams. We needed to get these back online like yesterday. So now we're gonna start building a new massive factory floor over in this direction. Probably at about this point here. Yeah, because I want to leave some room in between all of the different factory buildings to see the pipe under here, because that looks so cool, dude. And then we'll have like walkways and bridges all around. Oh, it's gonna be the best. But for now, more building. We got thousands of items to produce and we gotta get scooting. But now here is where the fun really begins. So you know how earlier I mentioned breakpoint processing, where we overflow the overflow system essentially? Well now we're gonna start building that. So how we'd usually do things with an overflow system, is we'd see what we're making, we'd determine how many machines we're making, and check the input. So for example, if we're making like 20 assemblers here, 20 times 36 per minute equals 720. So that means we build our 20 assemblers and then feed the entire system 720 steel pipes per minute. And eventually, the overflow system would balance itself out. Except now with this system, we're just gonna bring over literally as much stuff as we can and just cram this system full of whatever it needs. And that seems really inefficient, right? Like, why wouldn't you wanna measure things out? You're wasting all of these resources. Kibbs, what are you doing? And yeah, it sounds like really, really weird. But consider like the nature of how this game plays. You unlock a new tech, you build an automated system for that tech, and repeat. But once you move to making that new tech production line, the old one's running. And most of the time, once the new production line starts, the old production line has filled up like several massive bins full of stuff. And then never really has to run at full capacity again. So my thinking here is that if we just make a huge enough stockpile, We'll never have to worry about that item again, and we'll be good to go. And I think a great example here is computers. So you use computers in supercomputers. That's it. So once you get a computer factory going, it is a long time before you get supercomputers. Long, long time. Lots to do in between there. 
So if we filled up like six bins or nine bins of computers, we're pretty much set for the rest of the game. And then even at the point when we do need more computers, the previous system has overflowed so much and is so massive that we build a massive stockpile of supercomputers before the computers ran out. And once we have a massive stockpile of supercomputers, we can kind of leapfrog that idea through all of the tech tiers. And then what about items that need to be used like constantly, like these encased beams? Well, we just leave the entire system active forever. But because we're stuffing it with so many items, it will hardly affect future processing trees. And that pretty much is the entire system we're using for our entire world. And then the last piece of the puzzle is we're gonna connect every single item to every single production line simultaneously. So these pipes will be going to the encased beam area, to the stator area, and to the heavy modular frame area, all at the same time. And the only thing that will stop our machines from running correctly is by not having enough earlier production. But since we're building at scales like this, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Now of course there is one kind of major problem with this whole thing, and that is the amount of raw resources we need. We just need to just blast the map. Just take it all, pretty much everything, to feed this horrific new factory we're building. So like man, once we have trains, oh jeez, we're gonna have them going everywhere. If you thought the amount of trains in the last season was a lot, oh my. <laughs> Dude, this is gonna be like night and day difference. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. Like trains going off to this desert, up here, up everywhere there's resources, there's gonna be a train right next door. But while we're kind of stuck in the early stages here, that just means more belt highways. Belt highways across the land. And what do we need right now specifically? Ah oh, yes, concrete. Oh, so much concrete. So where's the limestone at? Hmm. I re the thing about limestone is there's lots of it on the map, but it's all over the place. Like a node there, a node here. I know for sure there's another node somewhere here, right? Why is it only showing three? It's not even showing the ones near my base. But yeah, you know what I mean. The limestone is all over the place. Luckily though, we have lots of infrastructure already, like this bridge here, and the bridge that's bringing all of our items to our uh, new main hub. So using both of those is gonna help a lot. Ah, but now comes the big fun. It's time to start making our new World Eater factories for constructors. So similar to the World Eater type factory that's used for smelters, we need some kind of repeatable design, which we can use for constructors now because most of the constructors are going to be decentralized away from our main base. And also, we're gonna need so many. Because this is just the normal limestone node. And that means when it's a Mark III with the Mark V belts, we can get 600 limestone per minute out of it. And 600 limestone per minute going through just... Uh, <laughs> going through just normal constructors means we're gonna have to have how many constructors? Well, 600 divided by 45 is 13.3 repeating. So we're gonna need about 14 constructors per node. And yeah, that's a lot. So we're gonna be making the first floor and then copying and pasting that design, whoop, as high as it needs to go. Oh my gosh, and this is just for a normal node. Pure nodes are gonna need even more constructors. Oh boy. However, the design shouldn't be too difficult. I'm thinking we just do about five constructors per floor with one on like a really low setting or should I say a very low clock speed I think if we have it on like 13 that'll be fine and then we have another four just at 100% so now when we copy this let's just say three times we'll have 13.3 constructors running essentially and everything should work out very very well if we just have the first splitter right in front of this so the main line of limestone will come right in here, and this thing will just get insanely overflowed very, very quickly. Only at 13% clock speed, that's like maybe five limestone. Yeah, that'll overflow in a minute. And then the rest will just overflow between the other four. So yeah, it splits into thirds. Half of it will go this way to those, and the other half that way to those. Seems pretty simple. Now on the input side, things should be pretty standard as well. We'll just have, for every floor, another three conveyor wall. Just like that. 
and are splitting things up way over here so we have plenty of time to get things all aligned and ready to go. So really, really simple design for now, but when we add in all of the lifts and stuff, it's gonna look a million times better. Like for example, look at this thing. Looks fantastic. So I'm not too worried with how plain this looks at the moment. Also, we're gonna be adding in a personal elevator on this side once it's all complete. And I'll add a little spice to that side. The back doesn't matter. And then this side, we just have a couple of these, what are they? Platform walls and a few other little things there. So nothing crazy. Except now for when we start copying and pasting this bad boy. So we need three floors, so we're gonna fill. Okay, we see the blue arrow there means we have to increase from here. So if we fill three up, preview that, we have our factory, I'm pretty sure. Also learned that we can hide this. There we go. Take a look at our selection and what we're doing here. And then if we're okay with it, we press the right button again, and we press okay. We're using the building cost too, so all this stuff is coming from our factory. So it's not free. We're just saving time. And saving time, we did. Very, very cool. There's a lot of grunt work that still has to go into this. Like I have to add in all of the belts myself, I have to add in the power lines, and then scoot everything out. So still a little bit of work to do, but that's the general design. <laughs> and now we have to do this for every single limestone node in the game. So that was the first one, and then there are two more over here. There is one right there, and then another it's right by the highway. Yeah, right over there. So our first factory is all finished up, looking fantastic. Got the factory right near our main line there too. Pretty much the same design. Couple little tweaks here and there. And then one more over here, which is on a pure node, so it has a few more constructors, but generally speaking, same thing too. And then off beside it, there is a copper node that's a little just hidden behind there. And we'll be adding in another world eater building right beside it soon. But priorities, gotta get that concrete. And with this, I guess we'll just start hooking it up to our encased industrial beam area, similar to how we did with the pipes. Which is just our usual overflow injection system. So it all starts off at the end, the stuff dries up, and then it gets re-injected with new material. So it always keeps topped up and flowing nicely. Goodness gracious. This took a little bit, and we actually still need more concrete, because I want another line that goes into the end of this system here. But this will work for now. And oh, the storage? When I told you we're gonna store up enough for like the rest of the game, I meant it. This is all going to be encased industrial beams. And it's gonna be so cool running this new system. And also, this whole thing isn't something to scoff at either. Like with all these assemblers, we are making 120 encased industrial beams a minute. And that obliterates our production rate in the first Let's Play. In fact, you know what? I'm not even that satisfied with this. I think we can still do better. Because the encased industrial beams are used in the heavy modular frames, which are the big goal. And oh my goodness, I was about to say, I wish we kind of had more of these, but 120 divided by 10 equals 12, meaning we can make 12 uh, heavy modular frame manufacturers. And 12 times three is 36 heavy modular frames per minute. And that's if we're running things the old way. But once we actually get to the heavy modular frame part of our factory, these bins are all gonna be filled up and directly inject 480 <laughs> industrial beams into the system a minute. Oh my gosh, and doing the math really quick here, all of these bins can store 48,000 encased industrial beams, which equates to how many heavy modular frames? Well, it'd be 48,000 divided by 10 times three. Oh my gosh, that's 14,400 heavy modular frames that we'll be able to instantly craft, essentially. Ooh, and more spicy realizations. What we can do is we can just throw in all of our power shards to all of these machines, blast their production capacity, and that will get our stockpile built even quicker. And then once we have a huge stockpile, we can remove all the power shards and put them into the next system. What a good strat. Oh boy, so now we're making 300 encased industrial beams per minute. Yeah, that's good. That's real, real good. Oh, 
but our power. Our power is good too? Alright, good. Everything works out fine. GG easy. Anyway though, I think that's gonna be all for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>